the World Affairs Council names you the World Citizen of the Year, that's a big deal. Well, we're very fortunate because Ezra Tashome, the World Affairs Council World Citizen of the Year for 2010, is our guest tonight right here on Public Exposure. I'm Stan Emmert, and I'm really looking forward to this because Mr. Tashome is doing something all around the world, but particularly with regard to Ethiopia, that's going to be a benefit throughout the world. Mr. Tashome, Ezra, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. So you're the, uh, the World Affairs Council uh, the World Citizen of the Year. And before we, we go any further, I just want to remind everyone the World Affairs Council is a tremendous organization. Uh, go to the website, world-affairs.org. You're going to learn an awful lot more, and you're going to want to, and we'll be saying kind of more here pretty soon. So you are working on something that I didn't even know existed anymore. Well, Stan, you're not alone. Uh, polio used to be huge in the 50s and 60s in this country to the point where everybody was afraid to go out swimming. But uh, in about 1985, the Rotary Organization and the Rotarians said, this is something that we are going to tackle. We're going to work on it. And at that time, about 1,000 children per day used to be crippled from this polio. You're talking about Rotary, the civic organization. The civic organization wow. said, we are going to take this and we'll do whatever it takes to eradicate polio from the face of the earth. That was the mm -hmm. commitment they made in 1985. At that time, polio existed in 127 countries. And it was affecting about 1,000 children per day. Wow. So when you talk about taking this type of uh, huge commitment, uh, it, was, it was huge. So today, you go and talk to some of the um, folks and say, well, you tell them that I'm eradicating polio. I said, what is polio? Uh, so yeah. that's, that's very interesting. Um, now, uh, you're working primarily in Ethiopia. You were, you were from Ethiopia originally. That is correct. And you moved here a long time ago. Yes. <coughs> well, I got to tell you, in preparing for all of the shows that I do, I almost always go to Google Images, <laughs> and I look up, you know, different different graphics, uh, you know, so that I can make sure that that we have some good pictures for the show. So, isn't this cool? Uh, go ahead and click because there's a picture right on the front page of Google <laughs> Images. If you were to do Ethiopia and polio, there's a picture of our guest tonight, Ezra Tashome. So oh, congratulations. If you're on the first page of Google, that's pretty special. Wow, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, let's go, to the, yeah. let's go to the next slide because polio is a viral disease that affects the nerves leading to paralysis. Okay, translate that for us. What does that mean? Well, what it means, it affects children if they're not vaccinated. Uh, the vaccination came in the late 50 and... Uh, Doctor, uh, the doctor discovered it, and then it takes two drops that you need to be vaccinated. The vaccination is an oral vaccination. You give those two drops to children between age two until age seven. And then in the absence of not having those two drops, those kids would have the chance to be crippled for the rest of their life. Yeah, let's actually go to go to some pictures. Here's here's some children yes. in Ethiopia, and that must be something. Oh, uh, you know, we we see these children in a place called the Cheshire Home, where they bring kids that didn't have the vaccination, and they're crippled. And what they do is they they try to help them by doing the surgery. They uh, they try to put prosthesis. And, and yet, you look at those kids, Stan, and I, I said, at least in my, in my case, I'll look at each child's eye and say, this child is crippled for the rest of his life for the lack of those two drops. And those two drops cost about 20 cents per... Really? Per, it cost about 20 cents is what the cost is. Mm. So providing those drops and knowing that none of the children that I provide or the Rotarians provide the vaccination, uh, they will not have any of that paralysis. And that's, uh, that's a huge success when you look at those eyes and say, mm -hmm. this child is not going to have polio. And it's just a huge success. Well, uh, are you winning the battle? 
we are winning the battle. It's, it's a long battle. As I said at the beginning of the show, when we started, there were 125 countries. Now it's down to four countries. And I said it was affecting about 1,000 children per day. Now you've got down to about 1,000, less than 1,000 children per year. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, to me, the success would be when no child will be crippled, but at least when you look at from 1,000 uh, per day to probably about one, two children per day, that's a huge success. Is there, is there enough poli uh, polio vaccine out there to be able to do the job? Absolutely. There is enough polio vaccine. Uh, thanks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they have given money to the cause and the Rotarians worldwide have also agreed to match the Bill and Melinda Gates money that's given to the cause. You guys are matching the Gates Foundation? Yes. Whoa. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the uh, Gates Foundation ga gave about $355 million. Rotarians will be matching about $250 million. So that's... That's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely amazing. So uh, in some of the materials, you've got a strategy to stop polio transmission. Correct. And so let's just kind of go over it. One of it is, is routine. Uh, there's a high rate of infant immunizations within the first year. So if you, if you get that, let's not go to the next one yet, but if you get a high rate of, of infant immunizations within the first year of birth, you, that's a good thing, right? That's, that's absolutely a good thing. It's, it's done in most countries, and uh, you probably heard when children are born, they get what's called OPV. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the, uh, for the uh, polio vaccination. Uh, no, DPT, I'm sorry, not OPV. DPT, mm -hmm. that's diphtheria, polio, and tetanus. Yes. So in that, uh, when children get that vaccination uh, within that time, the chance of getting polio is down to zero, correct. Um, next one is identification. Working with local health officers to immunize each child. I guess even more of an identification is finding out where the children are. Let me ask you this, Ezra. Yeah. Why polio? Why you? That's a very good question. Uh, I have I don't have any history, nor any of my family been affected by polio. In 1996, when I went to Ethiopia, I participated on the polio vaccination with the Rotarians. And I began to start questioning. I said, why is this child crippled? And what's causing it? And when I learned that providing the two, the two drops would save life. The lack of it would end up the, for the child to be crippled. And I felt the uh, commitment coming from me at that time to say, wow, I got to save the children as much as I can and participate in the, what they call a national immunization days. So it is just uh, some passion that I developed when I watched those crippled <coughs> children in Ethiopia and I said I would come back to Ethiopia and provide the polio vaccination with the Rotarians and that was the commitment that I made. We're going to take a very short break.